how long is your prison sentence? This is kind of an interesting concept. Mr. M Money Mustache kind of goes through and says, how many years does it take to actually obtain freedom? Which is, in his view, retirement. But he has a kind of shares a similar view that retirement isn't doesn't mean sit on a beach and do nothing. Retirement means the freedom to do what you want. So when he's talking about freedom, he's like, how much can you actually save per year or per month to obtain that freedom? And his calculation worked out about 64%. If you could save 64% of your salary, you can be done in 10 years, which means you're totally financially free, which is kind of a cool concept. Most of us kind of wander through college or trade school, work until we're 60, and then maybe retire. And a lot of us nowadays in America are probably going to work until their 70s because they have to, not because they want to. And that's not a really good place to be. So he's like, okay, so how do you get your savings to 64%? And a lot of us are going to be like, that's not even possible. But here's the caveat. He says, do not spend money unless it makes you happier. If it's not making you happier, it's wasteful. But then, okay, so what is happiness? So happiness is, gets a little bit more interesting. This is, well, what's the purpose of life? Is it glamour or is it hard work? And this is where it really kind of gets to the nuts and bolts. What is the six basic needs of, of a human? You need certainty, variety, um, love, significance, and then what we call the two spiritual needs, which is progress and service. The first four just kind of give us the foundation. The other two is what really gives us happiness. So he says beyond basic shelter, basic food, and basic water, which are the, the human core needs to actually survive, everything else is just kind of gravy. So if you can add in service and uh, progress, that's what's actually making you happy. So money, to a certain point, makes us happy because it's fulfilling the basic needs. And then a little bit beyond that is comfort, which can add maybe a little bit of happiness. But at some point, there's a cap. Money's not gonna make any happier, which is where we go to the, the spiritual needs, which is service and uh, growth or progress. So then he kind of dives into, well, okay. So now we know the separation between what's making us happy based on money and what's not. Everything else can go into the savings bucket. So for example, buying the $80,000 car. Yes, that might make you distracted for a period of time, and for some who truly love driving cars, it may make a prolonged happiness. But for the average person, happiness is not going to be driven by what car you drive. It may create a little bit of excitement at the beginning, but humans are really good about leveling stuff out. So at some point, it just becomes, this is what I drive, even though it may be something fancy. So $80,000 car versus a $20,000 car, that's a lot of money saved. And if you take that differential in monthly payment, for example, and so you could have afford maybe the 80,000, but if you take that to a 20,000 and it's bank the rest, that's a huge amount of savings. Same with house. Do you need the $20 million house? Is it gonna add any happiness? Or is it really just gonna cost you more money and really not add anything? So he says, figure out what that is for you. All that money into savings. Now you're huge into savings. And he does this with everything. You know, is your Netflix account really making you happy? Probably not. Myself, I canceled cable years ago and I couldn't have been happier. Stopped watching news, couldn't have been happier. Now I still have Netflix and a few other things because we have kids in the house, but start analyzing, is this actually making you happy? Take it away, put it in savings. And then once you do that with everything in your life, you're like, wow, not really much is giving me happiness. Going into nature, spending time with family and loved ones, you know, these are the things, going out and having service, building your business, for some that might may make you happy because it's progress and service sometimes. Um, and then he goes into, you know, friendship, freedom, health, meaningful work, right? Work that you want to do, not that you have to do. Because once you're free, you, you can't help but be authentic because you're not going to do anything you don't want to do which is huge. I mean, that's a game changer. Once you're doing something because you want to do it, not because you have to do it, even if it's the same thing. That's, that's the really kind of tweak into it. Philosophy of life, community, and privacy. And that's kind of his recipe for happiness. So if you can get to 64%, 10 years, and you're basically done. 
what you have is you can live off the returns on investment. It's just like, what's the purpose of earning money? It's just simply to have enough to fulfill whatever the basic needs are, and then everything else is gravy. And that's a really kind of cool place to be. And then he goes on to say, here's an ancient Greek proverb, which I appreciate being Greek, um, is a society grows great only when the old, meaning age, plant trees even though they know they will not be around to benefit from the shade. That's such a, an interesting gauge of what makes society great. And I think we've kind of lost that a little bit. You know, with, with our kind of policies we've created, you know, it's, is it benefiting us now and taking away from future? Or is it benefiting us in the future and maybe not now? Or is it benefiting both? That's an interesting gauge. So I'll let you kind of figure out what that means for yourself. But I hope this kind of helps you a little bit today. And if it does, drop me a line in the comments. I always love to hear what you guys think about my videos and what you'd like to see more of in the future. And if you want to work with me one-on-one, -on -one, be happy to. Send me a message. Otherwise, have a wonderful day.